ஹலோ வெல்கம் டு என்பிடிஎல் என்ஓசி அண்ட் இன்ட்ரடக்டரி கோர்ஸ் ஆன் பாயிண்ட் செட் அப்பாலஜி டுடே வில் கண்டினியூ வித் அவர் ஸ்டடி ஆஃப் ஃபில்டர்ஸ் எஸ்பெஷலி அல்ட்ரா ஃபில்டர்ஸ் டுடே மாடியூல் தேர்ட்டி டூ ஆஸ் எ ஈஸி கான்சிக்வன்ஸ் டுடே யூ ஆர் கோயிங் டு டிரைவ் எனதர் ப்ரூஃப் ஆஃப் டிக்னாஸ் தேரம் ஸ்டார்ட் வித் எனி செட் பை அண்ட் அல்ட்ரா ஃபில்டர் ஆன் எக்ஸ் வி மீன் எ ஃபில்டர் விச் இஸ் நாட் கண்டென்ட் இன் எனி அதர் ஃபில்டர் இன் அதர் வேர்ட்ஸ் இன் த ஃபேமிலி ஆஃப் ஆல் ஃபில்டர்ஸ் பார்ஷலி ஆர்டர்ட் பை த ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் இன்க்ளூஷன் Ultra filters are maximal elements. Okay. All atomic filters, FX, experience X, are ultra filters. However, there can be other ultra filters also. You never know. Okay. Remember, this FX means all subsets of x which contain the little x if you have one more element there that means that member does not contain little x then singleton x and that member will be intersection will be empty that is not allowed therefore fx is maximal so that is the idea so these atomic filters do play a you know important role every filter is contained in an ultra filter so this kind of result we are now very familiar <laughs> using john's lemma for what we do start with a filter look at the family a of all filters on x which contain the given filter f this family is partially ordered as usual by inclusion <coughs> if lambda is a chain in a then the standard arguments will give you that union of all members of this chain is again a filter which will contain all of these things therefore that will mean upper bound for this family right now you can apply john's lemma there must be maximal elements over as everywhere else the existence of ultra filters is assured by john's lemma but john's lemma is very uh, strange thing even though nobody may be able to explicitly display one such we are guaranteed that they exist for example this is not a joke for example consider an infinite set and the cofinite filter that you have considered namely collection of all subsets such that their complement is finite except the uh, empty set of course empty set will not be there anyway so that is a filter okay clearly it is not an ultra filter okay it is not maximal you can put extra elements there okay of course we have to be careful but apparently nobody knows an explicit example of an ultra filter containing it okay john lemma says there is one in fact there may be many but you want no you want to construct one let x be any set and f be a filter on it then the following statement a b c are all equivalent so we have two different criteria other than the definition which uh, are equivalent to f so 
in all we will have three definitions of ultra filter okay so f is an ultra filter the statement b is for every a inside x either a or a complement belongs to f both of them cannot be there that we know so this either a or a complement belongs to f so this is quite a strong condition the third one is a weird one but this is quite helpful also a and b are in x the union is in f implies a or b is inside f remember by the very definition of filter if a is there or b is there union will be there already because any superset will be there but now some superset is there which has written as union union of two subsets okay then one of them must be inside f so this is the condition for an ultra filter let us prove this one for some uh, you know pedagogical reason which we will come to know later i have put this a b c in this order maybe i should have put a first and then c second and b b third but in my mind this is easier to understand after the definition of ultra filter ultra filter itself is easy to understand namely it's a maximal element it's one of the maximal elements so that is easy to remember and then this is uh, simpler and easy to remember also but while proving i will prove it in a different way that is uh, economical a implies c c implies b and then b implies a that is what we will do okay so first assume f is an ultra filter and union of two subsets is inside f first we claim that f union a or f union b has finite intersection property okay if this is not the case then we get two subsets b1 and b2 inside f okay subsets of x but they are members of f such that a1 intersection a is empty similarly b1 intersection b is empty because each of these family has violated the finite intersection property okay if you remove b it has finite intersection if you if you remove a it is a finite intersection property so only because you have put a here and b here It, it might have violated the finite intersection property which just means there are members a1 and b1 which when intersected with a and b respectively are empty but then look at a union b which is already a member of f that is the hypothesis here intersect with a1 intersection b1 a1 and b1 are both elements of f therefore intersection is also an element of f so look at this intersection this is one element these these two are two other elements take the intersection that is also another element so this finite intersection this is nothing but a union b intersection a1 a intersection a1 is empty so this is just b intersection a1 and then intersection with b1 again b intersection b1 is empty so intersection of this finite intersection intersection of this is empty okay so that is a contradiction okay because a union b and a intersection b are already in f okay so it follows that these two have finite intersection property any family with finite intersection property will generate a filter right so both of them will generate a filter okay a intersection b or i mean one of them or the one uh, generated by f intersection b containing the other filter okay both of them will contain f since f is maximal okay this proves that either a must be inside f or b must be inside f 
remember we said this or this one has finite intersection property and then assume that none of them have that is what we have got this one. So, since that contradiction we get one of them has finite intersection property we generate a filter which is larger than f, but there is no filter which is larger than f because f is ultra filter. Okay. So, either a or b at least one of them is inside. Okay. Here it is not either a, both of them may be also there, I do not care. So, statement only says that the a or b is inside f, there is no either a or a b. Okay. C implies b is one line proof, because what I can do? I can take this a complement as b, then a union a complement is all space x, that is always there, that is free. Therefore, I can apply C to conclude that either A or A or A C belongs to F. Of course, we know that both of them cannot be, so we can put either A or B. So, C implies B is very cheap, right? That is why I proved A implies C first. Now, let us prove B implies A. Suppose F is not maximal. Suppose, according to this definition, f must be maximal filter, right? That means what? There is a filter f prime containing it properly, right? So, take an a inside f, f prime minus f, a member which is in f prime but not in f. Now, c implies a c, the complement must be inside f because a is not inside f therefore a c is inside f prime also right because f prime is larger than f right once a c is inside f a c a c is a complement is inside f prime but a and both a prime are inside f prime that is a contradiction <laughs> okay so f prime must be equal to f there is no other choice Okay. Therefore, we have proved A implies C implies B implies A, the theorem is over. As a corollary, we prove something uh, very, very you know, important, very, very uh, useful also. Take any ultra filter okay, and take a function from M f from x to y, any function, then f check is an ultra filter on y. So, ultra filters behave very nicely, no question, no condition on f, okay, f check, f check, remember f check of f is, is uh, a unique filter which contains f check of a for all a inside f. Okay. How is that obtained? It is generated by those things. Okay. In fact, all that you have to do is take all supersets of f, f of a where a is inside this curly f. So, that is the definition I have checked. So, let us see how this comes. All that I have to do is I will use the criterion C. Okay. Or in fact, I can use criterion A here, what which one is I have put here, actually I will use criterion B here, see I all the time think of this as C, but now I would like to think of this second one, A or A complement. Okay. So, let B contained inside Y we have to show that either b or y minus b is inside f check of f. Take a equal to f inverse of b, that is a subset of x. Since f is an ultra filter, a or x minus a is inside f. Okay. If a is inside f, f of a is inside f f, therefore, and also we know that f of a is contained inside b right because a is f inverse b therefore 
be inside f check off. The other case is if x minus a is inside f, then f of x minus a is inside f of f by just definition, set theoretic definition, right? It's x minus a is a member here, f of x minus a is in this family. Okay. Also, f of x minus a is number contained in y minus b. Therefore, being a superset, y minus b will be inside f check of z. So, uh, we have shown that b or complement of b is inside f check of f for arbitrary subset b of y, which means f check of f is an ultra filter. Now, x b a topological space f b an ultra filter on x. Then every cluster point of f is a limit point of f. Remember, for a filter, every cluster point was a limit point of a subfilter. Right? What is the meaning of subfilter? Subfilter is a filter which contains that. But f is ultra filter, so there is no larger filter than that one. Therefore, it must be f itself, this f prime which which is uh, uh, which has x as a limit must be f, f itself. Okay. I repeat, if x is a cluster point of f, earlier you have seen that there is a sub filter f prime, sub filter means what? Con containing f, right? For which x is a limit. But f is ultra filter, so there is equality here over. A topological space x is compact if and only if every ultra filter in x is convergent. So, we have arrived at a very good theorem combining various earlier remarks. So, let me go through all these earlier remarks. 4.40, 7.40, there is a remark. This remark has actually three parts there. Theorem 7.50 and the above theorem and theorem 7.46 which characterizes the compact spaces in terms of filters. Okay, if you do not remember, maybe I should start just recalling this one. So, first let us look at this remark which says that if f is contained is a f prime, then f converges to x implies f prime also converges to x. Okay. Conversely, if f prime converges to x, then x is the cluster point of f. So, this is what just we have used, we will use keep using this one again. All right. So, next we have this one, every a filter is contained in an ultra filter. So, that also we will be using. Next, we have this criterion for compact spaces that every filter has a cluster point or every filter has a convergent subfilter. Right? And finally, we have just now we have proved this theorem namely, every ultra filter then a cluster point is a limit point. So, if you combine these things, what you have is start with a compact space and f be an ultra filter on it. As a filter, f has a cluster point, but just now we have proved that f being ultra filter, it has this cluster point must be a limit. Okay, so, one way is over. The converse is slightly more complicated. Suppose every ultra filter on x is convergent, starting with any filter we can put it inside an ultra filter G, right? Just now I quoted that theorem. Now, a limit of G because ultra filters have limits, limit of G is a cluster point of F by remark 7.40, which you have just seen. Therefore, again you apply this theorem 7.46, every filter has a cluster point, so that is that condition is equivalent to X is constant. So, what we have a neat theorem now, a compact set if and only if every ultra filter is convergent. Okay. 
later on we have to improve upon this one <laughs> one more improvement is there in a special case i will come to that one i am just uh, you know preparing your mind for such an improvement now we will prove tikhonov theorem in a very easy way a very canonical way recall what is tikhonov theorem if you have a family of compact compact spaces okay then the product is compact and conversely the converse part is usually is just put for completeness of statement that's all that is not part of tikhonov theorem actually because that can be proved much easily everybody knew that okay namely image of any continuous function okay under a, a continuous function the image of a compact set compact space is compact the projection maps are continuous so each xj will be compact if the product is compact that is not uh, what we have to prove what our uh, aim is if xj's are compact x must be compact okay so what we shall do is every filter on this product is convergent okay for each j look at pi j check of f just now we proved that uh, that pi j check of f is an ultra filter on xj right but xj is compact so it converges to some point x little little xj inside xj okay now it is a matter of just to uh, easily verify using the product topology here that this point x whose jth coordinate is xj is a limit point of f okay see what you have to show a limit point the neighborhood of this one is contained inside f that is the meaning of uh, a filter converges to x right converges to that point so maybe i will leave this as an exercise to you okay i mean there is no much i am not much exercise but you have to write down the detail that's all unlike the case of topologies it is easy to determine all filters and ultra filters on a given finite set you might have known that the study of finite topologies is indeed not a part of you know point set topology at all as such it, it is maybe number theory combinatorics all sort of things are there it is quite a different flavor different kind of things and uh, as far as topologies are considered uh, to some extent it provides some counter examples that's all beyond that uh, topologies don't use it much but the problems are there and it is easy to find problems but difficult to find solutions here of course <laughs> yeah so here similar questions if you ask for filter and then you can combine them also so i am going to tell you one single thing namely counting the number of filters and ultra filters on a finite set that is very very easy so okay, suppose f is a filter on x x is a finite set then you can take intersection of all its members that must be a member of f right of course it must be non empty because it's a finite intersection and it follows that that member b is contained inside every other member it just means that f is f b the atomic filter once b is there all supersets are there everything is there already so so f must be uh, f b atomic filter okay so every filter is like that means what there is a one one correspondence between subsets of f subsets of x and filters on x except b equal to empty so if to 
throw away the empty set, you exactly have 2 power n minus 1 elements, the number of filters on it. Similarly, let us look at when is this filter an ultra filter, that is also easy. The moment there are more than one point, it will not be ultra filter, because I can take a smaller one, namely <laughs> singleton b here for example that f of f x will be contained inside this f x will contain this one. So, there are there are larger filters right therefore, the only ultra filters are f b where b is singleton. So, how many singletons are there precisely n elements over ok. So, that is just for your flavor but I I'm, uh, I just want to, I am myself not an expert in this kind of thing, I want to ensure that there you can find many interesting questions here, but <laughs> answers will not be easy. On the other hand, if x is infinite, then the answer is much more difficult anyway. We do not know all the filters nor or ultra filters on a given set. Just take infinite, in particular take a countable infinite set natural numbers, even there we do not know. As observed earlier, we do not know an explicit example of an ultra filter which contains the cofinite filter on the set of natural numbers or any countable set. So, one more remark here, suppose a filter contains a subset B, then obviously, the atomic filter is contained inside F, okay, because F contains all supersets of B. Suppose further that no proper subset of B is contained inside F, see F, F may have even smaller uh, subsets, right. Then what happens given any A inside F, B is there, A is there, A intersection B is there, but A intersection B is not a proper subset of B just means that B is already contained inside it. Therefore, F must be F B. Okay. All right. As a special case, Assume that F contains a finite subset, then clearly we can choose B to be such that cardinality of B is the smallest, okay, among us all finite subsets contained inside F. It follows that once you choose that smallest uh, cardinality, just cardinality is smallest it follows that F must be F B. So, you cannot have uh, several uh, B such that all of them have same cardinality, okay, that is also clear anyway. So, in particular, we have proved that every ultra filter which contains a finite subset must be an atomic filter. Okay. So, this is something I would like to say some trying to understand what are ultra filters and so on, on an arbitrary space, on arbitrary set. Okay. So, the darkness is still there once you do not have this hypothesis, namely a, ultra, a filter which may not contain any finite subset, then you will not know how to characterize them. Okay. So, let us stop here, next time we will study ultra closed filters.